Need for Malaysia to set up embassy in Palestine. Good afternoon, I'm Zala Harni Ismail and you're watching News on 2. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak declared that Malaysia strongly supported Egypt's draft resolution rejecting the declaration made by the US to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Uh, isu ini uh, kita tentang uh, dan ianya adalah bertentangan dengan resolusi uh, Majlis Keselamatan uh, sebelum ini uh, dan dia tidak juga uh, merupakan satu yang boleh diputuskan secara unilateral hanya melalui runingan sahaja uh, sebab hak rakyat Palestin uh, tidak boleh di uh, the Prime Minister was speaking at a press conference in Maldives before ending his two-day official visit to the country yesterday. Defence Minister Datu Sri Hishamuddin Tun Hussein has disclosed that the need for Malaysia to set up an embassy in Palestine is expected to be discussed at the next cabinet meeting. Datuk Sri Hishamuddin said the views and opinions from all cabinet ministers and other relevant quarters, especially from the aspects of economy and security, should be gathered first before any decision could be made. Kita akan dapat pandangan daripada Wisma Putra, kita akan dapat pandangan dari segi menteri-menteri um, ekonomi kita. Uh, kita akan dapat pandangan daripada um, uh, ke isu keselamatan di KDN dan juga di Mendah. Jadi bila kita combine semua pandangan tu, kita insya Allah akan dapat membuat satu keputusan yang mengambil kira uh, apa jua kebimbangan dan perkara-perkara uh, yang mungkin tak terfikir hari ini. Dato Sri Hishamuddin said this in response to the proposal that all Islamic countries should set up their respective embassies in Palestine. Employers must start paying the levy for hiring migrant labour beginning January 1, 2018. In a statement yesterday, the Human Resources Ministry said through this policy, employers all over Malaysia must bear the levy fees for new foreign workers and also foreign workers who have temporary work permits. The statement added that stern action will be taken against employers who fail to follow the rule of law in regards to foreign worker levy. The levy for the manufacturing, construction and service sector is 1,850 ringgit, whereas for farming and agriculture, it is 650 ringgit. The levy for domestic helpers is between 410 to 590 ringgit. In Sabah and Sarawak, the foreign worker levy for the manufacturing and construction sector is 1,010 ringgit. The levy for the service sector in Sabah and Sarawak is 1,490 ringgit. Whereas for farming, it is 590 ringgit and for agriculture, it is 410 ringgit. The levy for domestic helpers is similar to the Peninsula Malaysia between 410 ringgit to 590 ringgit. The Ministry of Agriculture and Agro-Based Industry MOA is looking to raise the fee for deep sea fishing boats license applications for fishermen to avoid intrusion into off-limit areas. Minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Shabri Chik said the license fees are currently quite low and the ministry will examine other criteria for the application requirements. The fees and the amount of the fine to be imposed after it is enforced is still in the final process of being reviewed for completion before it is brought forth to the Cabinet. According to Dato Sri Ahmad Shabri, so far MOA has also not imposed any requirement on local fishing boat operators who employ foreign nationals to work as fishermen. Fee-nya hanya 3,000 setahun adalah terlalu rendah dan Kita juga akan apa ni, melihat tentang uh, jumlah denda yang dikenakan kepada mereka supaya uh, tindakan itu lebih tinggi lagi daripada sekiranya mereka melakukan kesalahan. He was asked to review the case after the intrusion of deep sea fishermen in the coastal areas damaging fishing traps in Kuala Paka, Terengganu and in Pekalan, Cepa, Kelantan while causing the fishermen a loss of nearly 10,000 ringgit per year. 
Datuk Sri Ahmad Shabri asked fishermen to report any deep sea fishing boat intrusions to the fisheries department for appropriate actions to be taken. Deputy Health Minister Datuk Sri Dr Hilmi Yahya has disclosed that the Health Ministry is vigorously promoting the local health product industry to gain a foothold in lucrative international markets such as China. In line with this, five local companies have signed a Memorandum of Understanding MOU with Yisheng Health Holdings Dan Berhad, an organization that works with 500 Chinese entities to promote their health products at the international level. Satu perkara yang kita amat menggalakkanlah kita bawa produk daripada Malaysia ke China. Malam ni dia ni selalu kita bawa produk dari China ke Malaysia. Di malam ni kita buat perjanjian menghantar produk Malaysia ke China. Termasuk juga perkhidmatan apa nama breast screening, screening untuk payudara, ya. Eh? Among the products bound for China are swiftlet nests, arowana extract and eye care products. Meanwhile, healthcare services such as breast cancer screening using electric impedance tomography or EIT technology will also be marketed to over 100,000 people in China. Deputy Minister of Federal Territories Senator Datuk Dr. Loga Bala Mohan urged property developers to build more affordable homes due to the high demand, particularly in the Klang Valley. Dato Dr Logabala also encouraged property developers to collaborate with Kuala Lumpur City Hall DBKL to smoothen the process of building affordable homes. He believes that the demand for affordable homes will not be affected even if the outlook for the housing sector next year is expected to be less buoyant. You see what we did was basically we got smart partnership and we started this uh, embarking on this uh, smart partnership with uh, developers in in respect of the what do you call the Rumavip, the affordable houses. So with that, we have seen success in terms of uh, buyers wanting to buy the units. A fisherman was jailed for 115 years and ordered to be caned 24 times by the Sessions Court in Kuantan today after he pleaded guilty to five charges of incest and raping his own daughter between October 2013 and October 2017. The 53-year-old accused from Kampung Tebat Pekan was charged with the offence towards his daughter, who is now 20, in two proceedings in separate Sessions Courts. In Sessions Court 1, the riverine fisherman was jailed 40 years by Judge Unaiza Muhammad on two charges of committing incest on October 20th, 2013 and October 24th, 2014. He was charged with carrying out the acts on a raft house on Sungai Pahang, Kampung Tebat at 8.30pm on the dates mentioned when his eldest daughter was aged 16 and 17 years during the two incidents. The accused was charged under Section 376B, which stipulates a minimum 10-year or maximum 30-year jail term and caning. Judge Unaiza sentenced him to 20 years jail for every charge and ordered them to be carried out concurrently. In Sessions Court 4, the accused was sentenced to 75 years jail from the date of arrest and 30 strokes on three charges of raping the same daughter on September 14th, 22nd and October 3rd at the same place and time. Judge Siti Amina Ghazali sentenced the accused to 25 years jail and 10 strokes for every charge. The charges were under Section 376, Subsection 3 of the Penal Code, which provided a maximum 30-year jail term and 10 strokes, but the caning on the accused was reduced, as Section 288 of the Criminal Procedure Code provided that an offender could only be caned a maximum of 24 strokes. A hotel operator was charged in the Kuantan Sessions Court for trafficking two Indonesian women with the aim of forcing them to work. The accused Chan Chong Yu, aged 65, pleaded not guilty when the charge was read to him before Judge Dato Unaiza Muhammad. According to the charge sheet, the accused had forced two Indonesians to work for him at a premise in Bukit Istana, Banda Indramakota, Kuantan. 
The prosecution under Section 12 of the Anti-Trafficking in Persons and Anti-Smuggling of Migrants at Ipsum 2007 was conducted by Deputy Public Prosecutor Wong Siu Man before Judge Dato Unaza Muhammad. If convicted, the offender can face imprisonment of up to 15 years and get fined. The accused, represented by counsel Muhammad Irfan Abdullah, had allegedly committed the offence at about 4.10pm on 29th November and then in a house in Bukit Istana, Banda Indra Mahkota, near Kuantan. The court set bail at 12,000 ringgit in one shorty and 2nd to 5th January 2018 for court hearing. The accused was also ordered to surrender his passport. A 35-year-old man drowned while trying to retrieve a ball in the sea off the coast of Pantai, Putri, Malacca yesterday. The incident was said to have happened at 11.30 a.m. when Rohim Rohani from Klang Selangor said to be fishing with his brother-in-law, Muhammad Harita Judin, 34, by the beach when he spotted a ball like his nephews floating away into the sea. Rohim tried to retrieve the ball, but he was swept away by the waves and disappeared from view. Tangabatu Fire and Rescue Station Chief and Assistant Fire Superintendent Roslan Mana said their team rushed to the scene after receiving a distress call at 11.54 a.m. I tried to help the victim's body was later discovered by a local fisherman at 4.45 p.m., some 20 meters from shore. And that concludes this afternoon's edition of News on 2. In our top story, Cabinet to discuss need to set up embassy in Palestine. Join us again tonight for more updates. Until then, I'm Zalia Karni-Smile and thanks for watching.